Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the smooth tool and making a trow. So let's go ahead and get on with it now. First off, we'll do file, new, general. And if you're just opening up Blender, just do new file general. Let's do save as and call it smooth. So for the smooth tool, I'm not a huge fan of the smooth tool, but we're still going to talk about it just so you know what you have at your disposal. So I'm going to go into render view and let's take Eevee into edit mode and then just select all and I'm going to show you what it does. So down here at the bottom, if you scroll down, you'll see the smooth tool and it looks like a little cube that's starting to be smooth and that's all it's doing. It's just flattening out the faces. So go ahead and click on it and click on this little tab here and if you pull it, it'll fart. No, I'm just kidding. If you pull it, it will smooth out Suzanne. So notice we've got our little smooth vertices here because we've kind of activated it. So here you can continue to smooth it. So notice what it's doing. It's just taking this low poly design and kind of straightening or flattening the geometry. So and you're also losing a lot of the space. You know, it's making it way smaller, but that's pretty much what it's doing. So go ahead and play with that. Try and just kind of get the feel of it. You can also increase the repeat. So say if you max it out, you could just keep going until it looks very strange here. Um, you can also type in a value if you want. So that will do some kind of weird stuff there. Um, I'm going to just put it back to one. And notice you can also change the axes that are being smoothed or not being smooth. So just notice if I uncheck the X, it's not smoothing on the X axis or the Y or the Z. So... That's just uh, you know something to keep in mind for different types of effects. But today we are going to use this to build another tool. So let's go ahead and delete Suzanne. Let's go to our object mode, hit X, and let's just create a cube. And we can do maybe like 50. There we go. And we'll give it a material. Why not? We'll just do red. All right, so now we've got a little cube here. And let's go to edit mode. And so we'll take our selection tool and let's just go to front view and grab it on the Z and just put it right there on the floor. That's fine. Just somewhere close. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll take the top face here and do G and Z and just kind of drop it down. So just something like that. It doesn't matter how thick it needs to be. We can always check it in our item. So it's about three millimeters. So let's go back. And what we're going to do now is go to top view and go to point mode right here. So just hit one and let's go through to our see through. And what we're going to do is just click and drag and grab that corner and that corner. So we have the top and bottom selected and the top and bottom go back to top. And we're just going to grab these, bring them up here and scale and just kind of make like a little, little triangle trowel type thing. And now all we have to do is do a little loop cut, loop, loop. So just click twice, another loop cut, loop, loop. And let's go to face mode, select our top face up here. Make sure you've got the top one. And we're just gonna use our tool, the inset. I'm just gonna hit I to inset. And then we can use our extrude tool, but I'm just gonna hit E to extrude and just go up a little bit. And then we want to rotate this at 45 degrees, but notice if we hit rotate X, it's not really, you know, we want it to rotate to, um, at the same angle uh, we're at. But since we're kind of on a corner here, it's not going to let us do that. So I'm going to show you a trick. You can go into top view, hold shift, and then type four or six on your numpad and just kind of rotate it around until the angle looks a little more straight up and down. It's really not that perfect, but that's okay. And what we can do is change our transformation orientation to view. Now we're going to rotate this from the perspective of our view. So now if we do R to rotate and say X, notice our line is rotating that way. So we are going to rotate negative 45. Now if we look, that looks a lot better. And so now we can just change our transformation orientations to local or to normal. So notice it's gonna just use the face or the normal. And if we do E to extrude, it's gonna extrude along that normal. 
And there we go. We've got a trowel. You can even scale it up if you want. Totally up to you. And we've done it. We've got a trowel. But that's just the basics. So I wanted to make something super low poly um, and just show you, you know, something that's very square and boxy. And we're going to make it smooth. So let's turn off our x-rays. And I don't really like to use a smooth, like I was saying, because it's destructive. But let's just show you what it can do. So if we select all and go to our smooth tool, it's not really going to do that much because we have such a low poly count. So it's really just shrinking it almost. So just undo that. And what we need to do is create a little bit more geometry, not too much. Uh, less is actually more with the smooth tool. So let's subdivide maybe two times. So notice we've just got just a little bit of geometry. I'll switch over here so it may be easier to see. So just a sub subdivide of two. And now let's pull the smooth tool. And that looks way better. So just kind of smooth it out to your liking. I'm happy with that. And there we go. We've got a trowel. Simple as that. So that's all you have to do to use the smooth tool. Again, um, you know, there's better ways to do it, like with your uh, modifiers. But since this is a tools class, I just wanted to show you how to do it with the tools. And one thing before we print it, if we go to side view with three, notice the bottom isn't that flat anymore because of the smooth tool. So what we can do is just go back into object mode create a cube, shift A, and just grab it, and just bring it on down somewhere in there. Maybe top view, and just kind of line it up a little bit somewhere in there. You just want to make sure you're covering all of it. And let's go to our side view, and we go to wireframe. And we just want to cut off a little bit of this so it's easier to print. Um, so this is just something I do to make it a little easier sometimes. So we'll make sure you have your cube selected and we'll shift click on our trial and do control minus and there we go now we've got a nice flat bottom there and let's rename our cube here let's call it trial and we can click and drag that over hold shift and link it to the trial that way if we move it around our little box stays with it and this is ready for 3d printing so let's go to 3d print Check all, zeros on everything, that's what we like. And let's export, tell Blender where you wanna save it. I've got a little STLs folder, hit accept, and export. So I'm in Prusa Slicer here, let's bring in our object. And here we go, we've got a little trowel. Let's do our settings, 0.2 is fine. Infill, that's good. Maybe do gyroid, you know how I do. Support material, we don't need supports. And maybe add a few layers for the raft. And let's print it. And there we go. So within about an hour, we'll have this nice looking. And I may not do the raft. I'll just do zero. That way it comes straight off the print bed, just like that. And actually, what could be cool is to add a color change. So maybe right in here, as we start doing the new layer right here, you can hit this plus sign, right click it and say, add color change. Boop. And then you can, you know, we'll change it to blue. Say, okay. And now the printer will pause. Let us change the filament color and continue. So that I think that'll look a lot cooler uh, when it's printed. So let's do that. I think this is a good one to, uh, uh, show the multicolor. So let's go ahead and print that thing. 